and uh, you're good to go. Okay. Well, well, Tina, thanks so much for joining us today. We are excited to have you on the podcast and uh, look at, looking forward to kind of uh, talking about your running background and experience. And also, I uh, was looking over the uh, the information that you sent over about the uh, negative splits, and I was glad that I'm not alone. So uh, we'll look forward to, to diving into that as well. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And I, it's funny, I, uh, as part of my job, you know, do social media, I keep up to date with all the new things. And uh, as much as I've known about Blab, this is actually my first one. So I'm kind of, oh. kind of excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to do. We, uh, we enjoy doing it. So it's fun being able to see the people and then they do a great job because you record it and uh, then you can put it back out later. Yeah. That's Absolutely. Cool. Well, 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 tell us a little bit about your running background, Tina. How did you get started in running in the first place? Um, well, I guess I should start the very beginning was the funny part. Many people who follow my blog know this, but um, I actually uh, hid in the bathrooms for the first time uh, I was had the opportunity, I guess, to do cross country tryouts for the team and wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, so I hid in the bathrooms. Um, and yeah, which is which is funny now. But yeah, eventually in through my PE classes, I just kind of ended up near the front and people, you know, Obviously, uh, after that point, they were like, okay, you know, you can actually can do this. And mm -hmm. as what usually happens when you get good at something, you you want to do it more. So I, I, I started with cross country and it's a little bit different in England. It's not uh, quite the same as it is here. But uh, yeah, I worked my way through the ranks. I had a great coach who was uh, fantastic. But at the same time, I'm so grateful to him because he didn't like run me into the ground, which a lot of teenagers end up doing when they get pushed too far. Um, so yeah, and then I, uh, got good enough to where I was offered a scholarship to a university, well, quite a few universities in America. And, um, I'd always loved America. My family has always been very attached to America and, um, I, as cheesy as it is, I love the opportunities here and I decided to go for it. And, um, yeah, so did my five years here and then I, um, I ended up as an 11 time all American at wow. Ferris State University. So that went pretty well. I had, you know, obviously some ups and downs, but I improved every year, which was great. And then when I graduated, um, I became a Sockney runner um, and uh, just started striving towards, you know, long-term goals in the marathon. And, uh, you know, I've been working hard at them and it's, it's starting to come together now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess this, I don't know how detailed you want me to go. So that's, that's kind of a sum up. <laughs> No, that's great. You know, it's interesting that I would love to kind of hear your your take on kind of the cross country thing because it, it's funny. We my I've got an older son who runs middle school cross country, and he, you know, honestly he he loves to run just because he loves to run. And so mm -hmm. if he competes, he competes. But he would just go run because he loves running. What is it? What happens in a lot of the high schools because I, you know, we've even seen it in our community where we we've we've had a kid who he he had his fastest times as a freshman and as a sophomore and he's actually gotten a little bit slower as he gotten older what what tends to happen in in with cross country do you have any idea is it is it just that hey if uh, if, if one hard session is good five is is better do you have any idea kind of what happens to some of these kids Actually, it's funny you ask about this because my husband is actually, he's a, um, a cross country and track coach at Moorhead State um, in Kentucky. And uh, he, for his, he's doing his master's right now. And um, his project that he's doing for basically in each class, you have to kind of uh, focus on something. And what he is doing his on uh, in each class is um, how high school runners, if they if they ran in middle school tend to struggle when they get to high school level i just want to pause because i can't see you guys i don't know if i'm the only one still in here can anyone hear me oh yep margaret thank you saving me i guess it's just me i'm not very good at singing so i can't do that so just have to wait a second <laughs> oh the guys have gone it's just me. Any questions? <laughs> oh. We're back. 
Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> you're just saying, man. <laughs> Lab is great, but it's in beta, so sometimes you just go away. And I'm not really sure what's happening. So, uh, I wish I had another talent that I could have done during that time. But <laughs> we, we heard that you were going to sing, so yeah. we will. <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing. Sure we'll, at the end. We'll, we'll put requests later, so you just put those in the in the questions. <laughs> <folks. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm going to hit this recording again. I think, but um, like I said, for me, it's probably a bit more than uh, most people. Although this is really hard for me to imagine right now because I'm in my time off. And so I feel like I've got so much time in the day. Like right now it's 1 p.m., but I feel like it's like, you know, five in the evening because <laughs> I've done so much today already. Um, so this is a pretty, t a pretty strange feeling for me right now. <laughs> Is there something that you have seen that, that works for you or, or other elite athletes? What, what are things, what, what is something that elite athletes do that the, the average runner like us who goes out on the weekend should do? Are, are, there, are there, is there anything in particular that you can think of? Um, well, I guess, uh, I mean, the biggest thing for, that comes to mind for me is not what we do, but what we don't do, which is mm -hmm. so many people get sucked into running their easy runs too hard every day. Mm -hmm. And I know people think that, you know, elites go along at, um, you know, people will say to me all the time, like, oh, you know, I only ran 10 minute pace, but that's nothing for you. And, or I only ran eight minute pace or whatever. But for me on recovery days, I run about three minutes a mile slower than I would on my hard days, or even sometimes more, sometimes four minutes uh, slower. And I think people often think that you, you don't need to slow down quite that much, but you do. So elites really do take a lot of time to run easy because otherwise you would never make it. You'd end up injured or, wow. you know, you, you would hurt a lot. So I'd say that's, that's the biggest one that comes to mind for me. But, um, I also think a lot of it is, uh, you know, you, you put in the time and you just trust that even though there may be downs and there may be struggles, um, it's going to all work out in the end. And I think the problem with that is, like we talked about earlier, a lot of elite runners kind of put on this face of like, oh, everything's so great. And and they just show all this good stuff and they just show, um, you know, how well things are going. And it kind of leads people to follow along and think, oh, well, they just feel good every day because they don't show the bad. But um, I want to assure everyone listening that, yes, we do have a lot of bad and most of them are bad, actually, um, especially when you are in hard training because you run so hard on those days. So I guess just um, trust yourself that even if you are struggling, elites are struggling, too. They just may not admit it. <laughs> I, I love what you said about the about the pace is and, I, and it's funny I've got even friends of mine who will tell me hey I just ran my my fastest 10k today and I'm like oh, what race did you oh no it was just like one of my training runs I'm like mm. man you you do it wrong so I, I would love to hear your your feedback is it is it ever too slow like so I, I you know I know the thing about an easy run is that hey the easy run can make us make the hard day hard so mm -hmm. is it is it ever too slow so like are, are there are there so an easy run supposed to be so what about long runs is it is it ever too slow when we're running i don't know i mean i do know some elite runners who run uh, so hard that they can't run you know more than for them maybe a 10 or 11 minute pace which mm -hmm. for someone who's running you know five six minute per mile in race that may be a little bit too extreme. Right. Um, but no, I, I honestly don't think so because I, I just don't think you would ever allow yourself to get to that point. Like I try and make it so easy that I can breathe in and out of my nose the entire time, like going up a hill or not. Um, or, you know, you should be able to have a full conversation with a friend or, you know, use your heart rate if that's what you want to use. But um, I, I don't personally think so just cause I, I don't think our egos would ever allow us to run too slow because you would just feel like you were running on the spot, which people say they feel anyway, going slowly. But, uh, no, I, I don't think that is the case. I think, um, you know, your most people, once they have been running can, can tell the difference, but, uh, I, no, I just don't think. I think I don't. I'm sure there are extreme cases of people, but for the most part, no. That's great. Do you do you have a favorite workout that you do? Um, I actually. Oh, sorry. I just realized. I'll, I'll answer that in a second. I didn't. You didn't. I didn't answer your question about long runs. Um, long runs. I um, 
there are some long runs that you should do maybe with sections at race pace or a little bit faster but um there should also be some long runs where you're running very slow very mm. easy what I, what we call time on your feet runs um gotcha. so you know you want to have a bit of a mixture of both and make sure you definitely do have some of those long runs are very easy because those are the ones that your body is kind of just going to adjust to being out there for a amount of time yeah. but yeah favorite workout um for me i like the uh what we call progression runs the long mm. runs where you kind of start out very easy and then you just kind of like slowly progress it um because i just feel like that works in my wheelhouse and you mentioned earlier about negative splitting and i just i love doing that i love getting in getting in a rhythm and just getting faster and faster and faster so that tends to work for me in the way i like to run so i just i love finishing like a 20 mile run fast yeah. and you just you just feel so strong so Hey, since you mentioned it, would love to uh, love to talk about the whole negative split thing. So it's funny. I was reading the article, and uh, you know, and here's the thing: is I would love to get your love to get your thoughts on this. Is that the information was just all over the place, and so it was, uh, you know, I, and I'm with you. I I, I love running those per, these uh, progression workouts, and if for some reason I can do this when I go work out, then all of a sudden on race day, I don't know. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, I, I saw a different window pop up. I was like, oh, geez, <laughs> out there. but, uh, but, but yeah, on race day, I, I, I don't know what happens. I guess I know what happens. It's a marathon and it's hard. So I, I guess that's what happens. But it, w was there anything surprising as you looked at some of the information? We'll be sure and put the link in here. So everyone can kind of look at the articles. It's very fascinating on, on negative mm -hmm. splits, but uh, was there any information that you kind of saw in that research that was surprising to you? Um, well, I guess to me, it was the, more i mean i guess maybe the heat was a factor in the la trials one but it was kind of surprising to me that not more people uh who ran well ran negative splits but again i think the heat may have been a real factor in that but um not really i mean i i guess it's tough to say you know because uh it doesn't say about people that ran even splits and it doesn't say um about how much of a negative split this was but uh you know, yeah, I found it really interesting. And I just, I just like seeing any confirmation that mm -hmm. if you run that way, you know, it's because I'm always trying to tell people to slow to start off slower and work yeah. into it. And so it was nice to see that, um, you know, the the results were kind of showing this. And I think if you obviously, if you can run even, that's going to be even better. Um, but obviously, most people find it very difficult to run even and it is tough, you know, you especially with our like Garmin addicted world. It's, um, it's difficult to make yourself run even, but no, I just, I just loved, yeah. I love reading those little stats like that. And I think most, most people do. <laughs> I, I think the thing that interests me the most and seeing the stories that develop that day is something that I think a lot of us maybe don't do enough of and, and Hey, whether it's in uh, a negative split or whether it is a uh, even, but the idea of having a plan, don't go out mm -hmm. there into a race without having a plan, because mm -hmm. it was interesting to, to watch to watch Des that day. And I, her coach gave her the plan, and say, hey, here's the plans. And she stuck to it. And I mean, yeah. she she knocked it out of the park because she did stick to the plans. I guess that's one of the most important things for us to remember is that you have to have a plan, right? Yeah, no, definitely. And, and you know, and, and when you say a plan, or I, I don't know, maybe you maybe you do need specifics. But for me, it's not. It's not even usually like you need to be at this at this mile and this at this mile and this at yeah. this mile. It's, it doesn't have to be that specific, but just kind of know roughly what you're doing. Maybe I like to have random numbers um, markers like for the marathon. Uh, I like to do well one because that obviously is a good one. And then I do like four and maybe seven so that you can kind of see if you're on pace because um, you know what range you should be in but it's not a number like you can say you know if you go through the um half marathon and you think oh oh my god i'm 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 way too fast or i'm way too slow and you start to panic so i like picking random numbers so that i i don't know what that means um and then yeah i think i think a lot of it comes down to just knowing where like giving yourself a range okay as long as i fall in here i'm fine and then i'm just gonna let my body tell me what to do i'm i'm a big intuitive person person 
and and I know this happens to a lot of us. I'll ask from from an elite perspective. Yes, I have looked at my pace at mile five and like I panicked and I overreacted and I killed mm-hmm. myself because of that. Th- does it happen for the elites as well? Do they ever do they ever get off of the game plan so bad that they all of a sudden they overreact? Is that does that happen too for for elites? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think I think a lot of elites um, mostly just focus on racing, and that they're usually in a pack. Um, mm-hmm. I don't typically run like that because I, like we mentioned, I like to come from the back, so I'll kind of mm-hmm. let people go and then come back, like reel them in as they fall apart. But yeah, yeah. I would definitely say so that a lot of people um, do tend to overreact and may make a sudden movement, and then that's when you really get yourself into trouble, which I'm sure you know is yeah. when uh, you know when people make sudden movements or you know if you're running along and you look at your watch and it says like you're too fast you think oh no this is going to come back and get me and that's actually what I did think in the marathon I spent quite a few miles panicking because I was a bit too fast at the beginning um I wasn't really too fast but faster than we thought and so I I spent a few miles panicking or if you look down and you're too slow and you think oh this is really hard I better go and then you know I think a lot of that mentally it messes with you yeah can we put it in a real perspective so if you were if you were helping someone kind of design like a a, a race strategy and if they're like hey i'm i'm a four hour kind of person mm-hmm. what, what would you recommend those first few miles look like is it is it like a 9 15 pace is it just run comfortable would you have any any help for people who are like hey i have a hard time determining maybe it's my first couple of marathons well what should what should their pacing really look like the first few miles Okay, is is a four hour marathon? Is that nine fifteen? Yeah, I think it's a nine oh nine pace or something no, like that. No, no. I think that's what okay. that is. Yeah. Then yeah, I would probably say that you, um, you know, I, I would I would honestly recommend doing what I did for this marathon gone by or um, or the plan, which was um, say to you, the first few miles are going to feel easy. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what pace you're going. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to feel easy. So uh, I would say to yourself to look down at your watch or the the clock if they have it um to make sure you are not any faster than if it's 909 maybe nine minutes or 850 max and then um and then if you are too fast back yourself back down but i would have like a range to sit in that uh is close to that time and then i would have um calculate so it would be what um 32 40 is what you would want to go through maybe like i said four miles so then you you if you were at 32 40 great i'm on pace if you are 30 to 10 ish onwards 32 10 to 32 40 then fine that's okay just say you, you know you're fine um or if you're you know 20 seconds over that that's fine as well and then i would just kind of like just try and trust your body that's the biggest thing i like to tell people is just once once you've made sure you're in that range and if you fall in that range then just allow your body to tell you what it's feeling like i like to think of it as like rationing out my energy like i think to myself okay you know i'm eight miles in i've ration i'm rationing out my energy here i should have used just under a third and um so okay i'm feeling all right so um i mean it's difficult to say because a lot of people will say okay but i did go out too fast now what well, then I would say back off. If you if you went through, uh, instead of that 32.40, you went through at 31.40, then I would f- make yourself slow down because you always want to be able to kind of pick it up towards the end. And it's always better to be a bit too conservative and get to 20 feeling great or get to, you know, the the two mile of a three of a 5K feeling great. And then you can pick it up and pick it up probably more than you would had you put that done that time in the bank thing. The, um, by going out too fast that that time in the bank thing that that will kill you yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it's, 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 hey in your head at the moment you're like this makes sense i, I feel great i put a little time mm-hmm. in the bank we're gonna feel mm-hmm. good and about 22 you're like just bury me now it's yeah. just it's not worth it at this point yeah on Runners Connect, we actually did an article on it, um, or I've done a few articles, but one in particular. And yeah, they've, they've found all kinds of studies that show that A, that doesn't work. And then they had a good example of, um, I think it was Mary Katani, one of the Kenyan runners who was on pace for like 218 in the marathon, uh, but she went too fast. And then um, she ended up running like a 223. And 
ended up coming third or something like that. Like she just went way out. And that's, you know, that's a Kenyan. So yeah. they're very good at what they do. But even that, like no one is exempt. So yeah, don't fall, don't fall for it. <laughs> <laughs> And you talk a little bit also about Runners Connect. I, you guys have some tremendous resources. In fact, I've been using one recently. I'm just I've come back after a little bit of a delay, and and I've had some hip stuff, some some knee stuff, and some of the some of the workouts and stretches that are on that 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 are on your website have been mm-hmm. very very beneficial. Can you talk a little bit about the website also? Yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, well, it, what's funny is um, you know I do work for them, and I I I do I'm passionate about Runners Connect now, but. Um, I actually found Runners Connect myself um, on my way to the Chicago Marathon, which was my second marathon. And they have a a race strategy guide, which was amazing. And I remember reading through it thinking, wow, this is so helpful. This is so good. And then sure enough, that next week, Jeff reached out to me, Jeff Goddard, the uh, founder. So it was just so funny that um, he that it just worked like that. But um, yeah, so Runners Connect is primarily an online coaching community. So we have like um just this uh forum where people you know get their training plans they kind of encourage each other but but then yeah we also have um different sections within the website which are for people who aren't interested in the coaching but just want some resources so yeah um as you can see along the top there we've got a blog which has um our articles and we we really dive into different topics um it's really cool to see um like the kind of things that we've been researching like i just did one which is coming out soon the other day about arthritis and how that affects running or we might look at like how pickle juice uh, whether that actually works or you know this one like you see uh most recent one was social media like is facebook and social media actually making you feel bad about yourself or is it helping so it's (laughs) i can help answer that one with the results (laughs) What were the results? Um, yeah. Well, for the most part, actually, they did find that people um, it is not good for your confidence, especially <laughs> when you um, tend to follow people like we were. Ta- it's funny, like we were talking about earlier, where um, you know uh, you see these perfect pictures of someone with their perfect <laughs> coffee and their their perfect run, and oh, I had another great run. I felt so good, and yeah, that just destroys your confidence because you see this. You know, we see it all the time. You think wow, is someone's life really that perfect? Um, But then I did also put, um, there's also in there, there's uh, people who you like maybe should be following, like people that are inspirational or are going to make you feel better about yourself. So um, it was really interesting. But yeah, Runners Connect has all that kind of stuff. Uh, And then as you see that we have the podcast, which um, I'm actually the host of, which, uh, you know, I get all kinds of people on there. I've had like Chris McDougall. I've had Catherine Switzer. I've had a comedian on there. I've had a sports psychologist, all kinds of people. And then, yeah, and then there what you have on right now is the programs, um, the products like we have, you know, a form course, a strength training course. Um, a marathon blueprint for nutrition so we just trying to kind of have um, hopefully become like the runner's resource that you can find everything you need for um, you know getting the most out of your running if you want to run faster if you want to if you're a master's runner and you just want to you know you you've gone beyond just getting a PR and you just you realize what running brings and the beauty it brings us outside of PRs you know just how happy it makes you feel how like peaceful it is how it's your me time all that kind of stuff so um you know we really we really put the science in we look uh, very deep into um into things so it's not it's not the fluff as we say <laughs> snake that's neat. That's neat. Speaking of people uh, to follow, an unhealthy person. Oh, well, it's not unhealthy for me to follow, but Mike Wardian is one of my absolute favorites. And mm-hmm. did you see what he did in London six days after running Boston? Did you did you happen to see that he he ran a two thirty one on a hot day in Boston? He come back six days later in London and runs a two twenty seven. I mean, I just I, I didn't I know he was I there. Can't I can't believe he was. <laughs> he was. I, he was. How did I not know he's, that? Oh, I mean, I could have seen him. Huh. He's doing the six marathon. He's trying to become the fastest person oh, to, to run the, the six marathon majors wow. this year. So he, I, yeah, I he, believe he could. He's amazing. Well, did it, you, it, it's crazy. Well, did you know that he did? Um, what was it he was saying when he when I interviewed him? He did. Um, the, uh, he I think it was a fifty mile race. I can't even remember now. Um, on a cruise ship on a treadmill. I think it was like <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then he didn't. It didn't count, so then he did it again. 
yeah, he's he's no. he's insane, but he's he's so cool. Like he's he's <laughs> he is. Um, he, yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> he really is. He really is. A lot. Of, it, it's it's you know the funny thing is you you see some of these people and you're like, man, that is just it's amazing what they do and and uh, from uh, you're just just watching him and now he just how he loves to travel, loves to run. It just kind of makes the best of everything. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's really fun to see people like that who just. You just hey, take advantage of the of the uh, of their gift and just have fun doing it, you know. Yeah, and he's got the right attitude as well. He's very like chill and just wants to have fun. Like when I had him on the show, I actually uh, we came up with a thing about anyone could challenge him to something and he'd do it. Um, so he we had this whole challenge awardian thing, and yeah, he's re- he's really fun up for it and just just wants to you know see what he can do, but also have fun with it. So yeah, he's he's another good role model that people should be watching. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit. It's, I, I don't know if I mentioned this when we first started, but you just ran London. Uh, you're just coming off of the London Marathon. Yep. Can you talk a little bit? What, what's the course like? Is it a nice course? What, what's the uh, what, what's it like over there? Oh, I, I love it. Well, did, you, I, uh... did you see much of the course? Because I know you were. Uh, <laughs> you were you... Well, um, I didn't see much of the course this year, but I did do it last year um, as well. And um, that's why you guys have paused. So I'm hoping everyone can still hear me. Can someone type just to let me know that anyone around? Oh, okay. So I guess I'll just keep talking because maybe it's just me. Um, (laughs) Okay, good. All right. So yeah, last year when I did it, I actually just took it as kind of a, um, I wanted to have fun with it after, oh, they've gone again. I think I'm going to wait until they get back. I'm sorry, guys. If anyone has any questions they want to type while we're waiting, you're, <laughs> you're welcome to. I guess this is the downside of Blab. But I'm, if anyone wants to type any questions, I can ask, answer. It has issues. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't know. I've never used it before, so I guess this is showing. You were. You were. Mm-hmm. Oh. I don't know. Oh, Periscope? Maybe, Margaret. Mm, yes, I did have lots of issues, and I have lots of issues with everything te- technological. Um, oh, I feel really awkward now. I don't know what to talk about. Yep, Twitter. Got to get it. Oh, the guys have just signed in again. I think, so hopefully they'll be back on in a second. Well, <laughs> back again. Here we are again. <laughs> I was just getting to the point where I was like, okay, I've got to do something here. I'll maybe like get some photos out, show my childhood. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, our, it's, I think it's our internet today has, has been been pretty rough, but it's okay. Um, All right, so we'll shall I keep going? Up. You're good. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I this is my second year of running London, um, yeah. and uh, I had two bad experiences for my first two. So I decided last year that I just wanted to enjoy it. So I did. And last year, I um, I ran the course. I loved it. I looked at all my friends and family from home, kind of like running around, hi, hi, <laughs> like waving. And every photo of me, I'm like just smiling and just having fun. And um, so this, so that year I kind of got to see like, oh my okay. God, I'm going over Tower Bridge or, you know, yeah. oh, there's Cutty Sutton, just kind of like looking. But this year it was like tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, everyone watching me, all my family and friends, they all said like, oh, I, I, I shouted for you, but you just seem so focused. <laughs> and I think that was because last year I was just kind of like, do, do, do. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I had done it. It's a really, really nice course. You go over, you go around all the all the famous landmarks in mm. um, London, and it, for me, it was just amazing to see those. You know, just running over Tower Bridge is the best example for me, or like running by yeah. Big Ben, running by the London Eye, and and you finish by Buckingham Palace. So yeah, it was a really cool course. And um, but yeah, that wasn't the uh, the goal for me this year. I wanted to see what I can do and go out with no regrets because as much as I enjoyed last year I um I, I just took it a bit too easy and I ended up feeling disappointed at the finish so I didn't want to have that and so yeah this year I kind of went for it um I um remained focused but I uh made sure that um I I did make the most of being out there because I don't know when I'm going to get back but yeah I ended up running a 237.35 which was a That's four great. minute PR 
Um, so I was very happy with that. Yeah. And, um, uh, and you know, I've been, I've been through a lot this past uh, few months with anyone who follows me kind of knows that, um, I did do the world half marathon championships in, at the end of March, but the great Britain only picks their team, um, three weeks before. And it was a very like, am I going, am I not going? And it was, it's just, there's a lot, there was a lot of like emotion going into it. And I'd kind of um, really struggled with that and just kind of burning myself out a bit on my life before that. So I'd been through a lot. So running it going well for London really, really meant a lot to me. Did you know kind of going in that you felt good? Going in yeah. London? Yeah. I mean, I had some, uh, I went, I stayed in England in between the two races and um, I had some runs where I, you know, I did a 24 mile run uh, about three weeks out and I just felt so good. I could have kept going wow. and I was thinking like, you know, this is kind of scary. And then I'd have some, some hard runs where I just, I just felt so good and I'd run far, way faster than what I was set. And I, <laughs> it was kind of on the verge of tears someday, like, Oh God, I, I'm really in shape. And as bad as, as silly as that sounds like, you know, that's a good thing, but I was like, just don't mess this up. Just don't mess this up. Like, cause I, <laughs> I, it was, it was that scary thing of like, it's going too well. Like something's going to mm -hmm. go wrong any minute now. So I knew I was in shape and I knew I was ready to run fast. Um, and you know, I, I hoped I was going to, um, run around where I did and maybe even a little bit faster, but, um, yeah, I had all the indicators that were there, but I think a lot of that's that great. came from lots of struggles before that, yeah, that I was able to just appreciate it and just be grateful to be out there. <laughs> you talked about being focused and there's a great picture. I'm going to try to put it up, uh, from you at London. And I'm not sure if this records on blab, but I guess you'd be able to see. Oh, oh yeah. Go up. Yeah, what's up with being snubbed by Prince Harry there? What, I know. What, what is he turns around. Doesn't he I mean, know you're rude. coming by? <laughs> well, I've had a few people who have joked about that and said he was, he was, you know, telling his friends that I was coming or like he was um, yeah. getting his credit card out. Because I don't know if you guys saw my um, my dessert after the race. I think if not, you should show people. I've been uh, looking forward to that thing for a month. No, you have it, to go on the previous post? post, I think. Uh, okay, gotcha. So uh, if you keep going down, there's, um, it should say, uh, oh, up a little bit. Oh yeah. That one go on that one. Okay. But anyway, people have said Prince Harry was getting his credit card out to, um, Oh yeah. my, that looks yes. incredible. Oh, yes. you, you know how to celebrate Tina. I do. And that's, that's the thing. That's, I, that's, I don't care. Right. <laughs> it's, it's bad, but yeah, that was the, one of the best desserts of my life. But yeah, that's <laughs> what I was thinking about. That's probably what I was thinking about when I was, uh, focusing right there on that. Um, yeah, yeah. Just mm. so, so what all what all is in that? By the way, so, I mean, I see some Oreos. What what all is in there? <laughs> okay. Well, firstly, I just want to say that can I, I actually mentioned that within about five minutes of my finishing <laughs> my race. I was like, I get my free <laughs> shake. <laughs> um, but yeah, what is in that? It, it, it that one was an Oreo freak shake, mm. which is the name of it, oh. um, and it was an Oreo milkshake with um <laughs> chocolate like the, there's like hard chocolate chocolate around the edge and inside oh. it which you can see it drizzled there's whipped That's cream good. oreos and then an oreo cheesecake on top and can i just <laughs> say that i'm proud i did have the burger as well but i also yeah. ate half of my <laughs> sisters and some of my mums so <laughs> no one can tell me that i don't indulge because i definitely do <laughs> Yes, it was worth the trip alone. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, that wasn't the only reason I ran London Marathon, but um, <laughs> it was a good enough that, reason. <laughs> that, yeah, that that made it all worthwhile. But yeah, it was um, London was really fun, and um, I'd love to, I'd recommend anyone who who's looking for a marathon to go to go do that at least once. That's great. We have a starting to wrap up here and mm -hmm. appreciate your time. And if, if anyone have any questions who are, who are watching this live, I mean, feel free to drop them in, but a couple of questions we love to ask people is uh, two questions. Do you have a looking back, whether it's cross country, whether it's your most recent career, do you have a favorite race memory that sticks out to you? Yeah. I, I think anyone who follows me knows what I'm going to say here. And it was recently, and I actually have a photo right here. Nice. Just because I've just got them printed. But um, so my whole running life, um, I have the reason I've been running was um, I someday wanted to represent Great Britain in a world championship. 
Um, that was my ultimate goal. I'd always dreamed of it. Um, and I did, yeah, get to do that a month ago. So um, it was it was a dream come true. And uh, yeah, so everyone's kind of laughing at me in the running world because they say, you're just always smiling in your races. But I'm, I'm not, as you see in those focused <laughs> ones. But um, I guess I can show you on here. I, I guess yes. you can probably put, but yeah, just that. I mean, that's that was great. me finishing. I just... I just, I'm so happy that was, that's definitely was the highlight just because I'd always just wanted to hold that jersey in my hands knowing that I'd earned it. And so, yeah, it was definitely that. That's (laughs) awesome. And and the second question is, is there a good kind of starting point? So, hey, whether it's someone who wants to run a marathon or looking to just get started running, is there a good starting point kind of resource you would recommend uh, people to just kind of who are, who are just really kind of starting out? So you mean like a, like a somewhere they should go to kind of learn about yeah. it? Mean like yeah, like whether it's this particular article, whether it's something on the w- website, whether it's podcast, just uh, you know, I've got the tell you a little bit of a softball. Do you have anything particular like on your on 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 the Runners Connect website that you'd recommend people kind of? Hey, if you're getting ready to uh, to ramp up in distance or looking to get started running, maybe you would check this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Margaret's got it right there, and you guys just mentioned it. Uh, Runners Connect, I would definitely recommend, and um, a lot of it is actually based towards um, uh, beginners and people who have never run before. There's a there's a lot of articles, and you can go um, where you were showing on the website. There's actually when you go on, um, I think it's under products, or maybe I know it's under guides. I'm just trying to think because we just rearranged the website. We just did okay. a new design, but. Um, there's a section on whatever distance you want to go on. So there's 5k, 10k, half marathon, marathon. So I just go whichever distance it is that you want to start with, go to that. But, um, you know, as for myself, my blog, I don't tend to put things for brand new runners, but Mm -hmm. I guess I would just, I'd love if you follow me more because I will show you that there are, you do have bad days. Everyone has bad days and you, you know, you don't, I'm a real passionate person about people not feeling like they have to look a certain way or be a certain speed like you're a runner if you're out there and you're doing it so don't don't ever um feel like you're not part of it or shouldn't be part of the club so I guess from from my perspective um coming to my website would be more um just for people to see that you are a runner even if you are just starting and you don't feel like you look like one you're you're still a runner so hopefully you can see that um you can feel better about yourself that way i'm more of the emotional <laughs> that's great love it i did there's a question there about how yeah. long oh yeah, yeah. sorry i just said yeah so how long do you plan on on running that's coming from um doc to be up in chicago um well i don't know really i mean i i'd like to run my whole life um i will say that i don't think kids would be too far away for me um but um, so I would obviously have a break during that as much as I admire people who do, um, you know, run all the way up. I, I don't think I would want to do that. I think I'd want to make sure my, my body was in a good place. And um, so I will take a break for that. So there may be a small, a short stop, but no, I, I plan on running my whole life and um, I've still got some big running goals that I'd like to accomplish before I even kind of step it down a notch. What's your like dream goal? Would there ever be a moment you're like, I've, I've arrived, like I've, I've kind of hit it. <laughs> I, I don't know if as runners, we ever get to that point. I mean, I don't know whatever <laughs> level you are. I think you're yeah. always going to want so more. I mean, so even true. me running last weekend, you know, I was very happy, but I was like, well, maybe if I, you know, you, I don't think you're ever going to be truly happy. So, um, I think for me, the biggest one I'd want to get, I, I'm, I still haven't accomplished my lifetime goals for any of my distances, but uh, I've run 1608 in the 5k breaking 16 that would be a yeah. close the book um 33 24 in the 10k 33 would be close the book um I don't know about half marathon and marathon will be breaking 230 um so I guess any of those but then yeah when you get those are you gonna be like well I've done this so maybe I can go further yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. I, right. I mean for me the Great Britain thing was always the number one so okay. I even right now I could potentially close the book um and you've just reminded me i did not check it on my bucket list like physically check it yet so i need to do that yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah i i don't know if as runners as we can ever truly just let it go i don't know maybe some people can 
<laughs> that's awesome. Okay, Steph, well, uh, where's the, the best places? I know you've mentioned a lot already that folks can keep up with you and what you're doing. Yeah, um, well, I guess um, Runners Connect um, has all the actual helpful information with the resources. And I do actually have my own page on there. So um, I can send you the link to that. Or you can put that up. Um, and I'd be happy for people to email me if they have specific questions. Um, and then my website is tinamuir.com. So that's easy to find. And I am at Tina Muir for most things other than Instagram, because some person stole my name. So I'm oh. Tina Muir 88. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I guess just my website has all the links to everything you need. So That's awesome. Well, we had a, a blast chatting with you. Absolutely. Yeah, and congrats on London. And yes. we, uh, we look forward to seeing what you do and the great work you guys put out up at Runners Connect. So we love following along. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to go eat some more sugar now. <laughs> <laughs> and mark off on your uh, yeah. list, right? Yeah. I, I know it's bad. I promise I'm going to rein it in soon. But right now, I, in my time off, I'm enjoying my, my sugar for sure. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Tina.